everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Brief Talk podcast. We have someone special on today. We have Christina from Extras. Welcome. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. It's great to have you on. Uh, we mentioned your brand so many times in the podcast and on the site over the years. Uh, so it's great to get you down to talk about the brand. So Okay, I'm ready to go. All right. So what made you start Extras to begin with? What was the catalyst that made you start the brand? I think it came down to one gentleman named Seamus, who was a shepherd. And this was when we were doing Body Aware, which was more aimed towards men's mm. standard underwear. We had a um, our design shop in Bath, which is uh, or right outside of Bath. There was a small village that we lived in. And we were doing designs for the standard men's underwear and selling it through mail order. And this was back in 1992. And one day we had a knock on the door of our office and in comes this wizened old gentleman. He wasn't actually holding a shepherd's crook, but, you know, you can picture him <laughs> that way. <laughs> and he asked to speak to me and he told me that he was a customer of ours for Body Aware, but he really wanted something that was just a little bit more feminine. He didn't use the word feminine. I think he said some, a little something, something. So he wanted like a bow on the um, front of his briefs and maybe a little bit of lace around the leg. And I, I had no idea what he was talking about. I mean, I knew women's lingerie and mm -hmm. I was thinking this sounds like women's lingerie. But then Seamus told me that he was a cross-dresser and this is why he wanted it. So um, that was the beginning of us really listening to our customers. I drew out uh, just a, a small uh, idea and he said, yes, that's it. And then we were able to actually knock up what he wanted because we had our own machine shop there. We were able to knock up what he was asking for. And he said, that was it. Those were his dream knickers. So okay. that was the beginning of the whole concept was from a shepherd who wanted to have a pretty pair of knickers with a bit of lace and a bow. Nice. That's awesome. And then how did it grow from that one pair into what it is today? What, how did you grow the brand from just being, okay, one person wanted this to a whole company of amazing different things you have on your site? I, I think once again, I think, you know, it started with Seamus and it was like, you know, in the old days when you're watching black and white movies, well, in my old days, and then all mm -hmm. of a sudden colors came in and it just, this whole world opened up. And once we actually produced this pair of panties and started selling it to everybody, you know, through our mail or catalog, there was so much love and commerce and everything for these panties that we thought we're really onto something. So from then on, we started looking at women's lingerie and we thought to ourselves, how can we make this so it's going to fit men? Because that was one of the big mm -hmm. problems. Uh, men could certainly go to the different stores and buy women's panties or whatever, but it never really fit them. And we thought we need to make something that fits men because obviously there's a market out there for it. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started going to fabric shows. We started putting together our first collection which was mainly lace um it was you know a pair of panties i think we did a bra and a bustier and a suspender belt which i think you call garter belts in the u.s mm -hmm. so we put that together we shot it we we um, found a model who was willing to wear it put together a small catalog and started to send it out to our mailing list and you know we were getting people liking it and everything but the thing that really launched it was a journalist came by, he heard about us, and he said, I want to do a piece in, I think it was the um, independent newspaper in London, which was at that time a big broadsheet newspaper. So this guy followed us to the photo shoot, and he interviewed us and the models and myself, and I thought oh, it was just going to be some sort of small piece, nothing big, but it was actually on the front page of the wow. um, independent on April Fool's Day. Now, in the UK, April Fool's Day is a big day, and the newspapers, all the newspapers will always insert some sort of um, story that seems like it can't be true, and normally it is just an April Fool's joke. Well, they they went ahead and they printed this, and everybody thought it was an April Fool's joke, but it worked in our favor because 
we just started getting hundreds and hundreds and then thousands of men, you know, calling us, asking for our catalog, that sort of thing. So that's when it really launched. And we went from just some small company that made a couple pair of panties to, you know, a full range with a big audience out there. That's amazing that that one story may went sort of a, the newspaper wanted did it as a joke, but it really helped your business grow. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and subsequently from that particular article, we were invited on, I think I did all the chat shows in England and Europe. And then we were, I did um, Sally Justin Raphael show, which was, you know, one of the big talk uh-huh. shows back in the, uh, in the early 90s. So we did get a lot of publicity, but it was still always treated as a big joke. Yes. It was always like, oh, you know, I cannot believe that, you know, any man would want to wear this and what's wrong with them and that sort of thing. And, uh, you know, that's when we started sort of digging a bit deeper and trying to really support men who wanted to wear lingerie, whatever it was, even if it wasn't ours, just to try and give them some love out there. Yeah, that sort of leads me to my next question, because over the last five years or so, what is classified as men's underwear, quote unquote, is no longer what you think it is. It has evolved. A lot of men love thongs. They're getting into lace. They're getting into stockings. They're getting into all sorts of things that before they were never into. How have you seen this change over the last couple of years and how has that affected what you're now designing for men? Right. Well, I, I think from the very beginning, you know, so we always offered a full range of lingerie items for men, you know, with the panties mm-hmm. and thongs and negligees, that sort of thing. And our, our range still includes many of these items. But I think the big difference between then when we started and now are um, the fabrics that are available okay. for companies to construct the lingerie. In in the past, fabrics were pretty much limited to certain colors and blends like cotton, lace, slipper, and silk. And uh, But now because of the growing population of men who are willing to unleash their femme side, the customers are more focused on not only design, but also the fabric content. So as a company, we're moving in the direction of providing like not only gorgeous lingerie, but gorgeous lingerie that is sustainable, organic, and recyclable. Um, so that that's, I think, one of the changes as far as we go with what we decide. I think you're sort of growing with the the way society is moving with the recyclable, the uh, changes in what is considered masculine and feminine, because now guys are mixing you know, the lingerie with other stuff. Like we talked before that you have guys now doing lingerie with leather and two things that normally wouldn't go together. So it's just guys, I think, are being able to explore something they've been told, oh, no, you can't do this. You're not a man if you wear this. So I think your company has been at the forefront for years and years. And... I think you're now seeing more guys come to you and be like, I want to wear something. I want to wear lingerie. I want something special because men don't have underwear for special occasions like women do. Like you can wear something very plain or you can wear something very sexy, very makes you feel different. And a lot of guys just have the, you know, box of briefs and that's it. We're hoping that changes and guys get into lingerie yeah. or whatever it means to them and start wearing it. So, so yeah. Well, it, it's, it, uh, just to continue along that line a bit. So I think the change in men's underwear really has so much to do with these, these upcoming generations mm-hmm. of um, very open and accepting individuals. And also, of course, the social media outreach. So it, when, when we actually started the brand, I'd say a great percentage of our cross-dressing customers were not open about their choices. And there there always seemed to be a bit of shame, or not a bit, but quite a lot of shame about what they were doing yeah. in their own families and their own minds. And as a result um, of that, it was really hard to reach out to these people. And, and we would have to assure them that we really valued and we understood their privacy and we would not let their significant other know what they were ordering, that sort of thing. Um, so 
and that it was this shame thing that was sort of like driving it all. But now it's that doesn't seem to happen. I mean, maybe mm-hmm. it still happens in certain places, but not so much. And although there's still, you know, gentlemen of a certain age that would not want anyone to know their particular taste, but um, we really find it refreshing that the current generations, it's just no big deal about, you know, what they choose to wear. And that, and also that there are more and more companies that cater to these different markets. Yes. Yes, because it's amazing the younger generation now with the fingernail painting and everything else that sort of it's no longer masculine feminine it's just everything mixed mixed together and they're doing what they want to do so that's great to see and i think everyone else is enjoying it because it filters to everyone else so yeah yes awesome well you have some amazing collections in your site what are some of your more popular styles and what what got you to create those at the time if like what made you create those styles um let's see i think our, our by far the most popular range is our satin range okay. that we do um, i think we have new range of satin coming out about three times a year now uh it's a great fabric to work with it feels so good against the skin uh, it's, it's slippery and it's cool. So I think our customers really like that. And we are, a lot of our styling devices come through the type of fabric that we're using. Mm-hmm. So we know if something is so smooth and soft against the skin, that works out well for all sorts of different things. You know, panties and leggings and that sort of thing. But we're really inspired by fabrics as well we go to the fabric shows all over to see what's new so there are certain things that you know will work well for a basic camisole but will not work well for say a pair of leggings or you know a dress or something like that so we i I would say that you know we touch the fabric we feel it we sort of see how it feels on our skin and, and what kind of emotion does it bring up are we happy do the colors make us happy that sort of thing and once we know that then we know what sort of things were designed from that particular fabric. Nice. Yeah. I think a lot of guys fabric when we do our reader survey is one thing that's super important to them, whether it be, you know, if they're working out in it, want to feel sexy in it. It's something that you're going to wear it for hopefully many hours a day and you want it to feel comfortable and feel good against your skin. So it's great to hear you're always on the lookout for new fabrics to, bring forward and make guys feel sexy. And so that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And we are, as I mentioned before, we are really focusing on sustainable organic fabrics to use in our lingerie, because I feel like that is so important. Now we do not want to be fast fashion where your underwear just ends up in, you know, the the garbage pile. We want to make things that people can wear for a very, very long time. And then it can be recycled. Yes. And and also all of our packaging is all recyclable and sustainable. Oh, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I say there's underwear that's designed to come off and other ones that are designed to stay on because you can only wear it for about an hour and you're like, oh my goodness, this is about to kill me. So yeah, I like sexy underwear that you can wear and not just have it on just to be taken off a short time later. So that definitely is your underwear, the sexy all day type. So awesome. So you've had some awesome models and I'm sure over the years you have had issues with getting models because yours is not the mainstream underwear. How do you find your models and work with them? And have you ever had to convince someone to even try it or is it they know up front coming in, this is what it is, and then they're good. That's such a good question. Uh, so back in the old days, it was really difficult to find models. And our normal method was to go through modeling agencies because there was no social media. Mm-hmm. And uh, while the models might not have had any issue with modeling the product, the ones from the agencies, it was the agencies that would almost always put a negative spin on it. Yeah. Plus they would charge either double or triple the going rate just because it was a man modeling lingerie. 
Um, that was, I think, our first taste of that double standard between, you know, women's lingerie being acceptable and men's lingerie not being acceptable. Um, so, and it's funny because that agency model divide still happens to this day mm -hmm. where the agency demeans the product to the model because it's something that doesn't fit into the binary model of what men should wear. Yes. But, um, but thankfully these days we try not to use the agencies and we reach out directly through social media to protect potential models. And it's, it's just amazing who we find. And I'm, I'm absolutely astonished by the talent and professional demeanor of these people that we have the luck to work with. So if you're listening to this podcast and are interested in modeling for us, please get in touch. Yes. Let them know. They do amazing shoots across all your brands, the locations, the, Photography itself, it's just amazing what you shoot. And that's one thing that's always, I think, drawn me and other people to the brands are your photography and the way you do it. So that's amazing to hear. And I'm, yes, Thank you. And I'm sure you'll get some models because everyone is loving all sorts of new things they're trying. So that would be great. So do you have any memorable shoots, either with the location or uh, anything that you're shooting or happened? Oh, that's another good question. I'm racking my brain here. We've had so many interesting shoots. I think most of our shoots, they tend to be very well organized. We have a wonderful stylist, and we do a lot of prep work, as I'm sure these other companies do as well, probably at least three to four weeks in advance. So we know exactly what we're shooting, when we're shooting, which location in a particular house or whatever. I, I think the main problem is when we get photographers who are a little bit um, not on board with the product. And that that's difficult because there are certain photographers out there who do not like to shoot men's behinds they will only shoot the front so to try and get them to actually shoot a model when he's turning around is almost impossible for some reason i haven't figured that one out yet maybe they just don't like men's butts we've also had problems where the owners of a place where they've actually let us use their place they'll have like a dog and the dog interrupts the photo shoot and i've had photographers oh, yeah. pick up dogs and throw them in pools because the dog is barking and that's those are the things that are just really difficult because you know as the owner of the company i'm responsible for all these mm -hmm. people and that takes a lot of apologizing that sort of thing but uh yeah yeah I, we've done shoots in the past on the blog and there's always things that either go wrong models that don't show up and doing a shoot, everyone thinks it's just, oh, it's just this glamorous thing you do. And it's just, oh, it's fun, fun, fun. And I'm like, no, it's work. It's not just take a few pictures and you're done and you have a party. It's like you need a photographer who knows how to shoot because you'll get people who don't know how to shoot men's underwear. So you don't see the underwear or the swimwear in the shoot they're focusing on like the guy and they cut it off and it's like, wait, I'm trying to sell something here. Or they do too much like catalog stuff where it's like, it's not interesting. So you have to find the right photographer. And then I haven't heard of photographers not wanting to shoot the backside. That's kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good one. But you know, Tim, of course, now that you're reminding me of some interesting stories, do you mind if I share? With sure. You? Go right ahead. So, this was early on uh, when we were starting to do shoots in L.A. We, we moved from the U.K. to the U.S. Um, in the mid-90s, and I started setting up these photo shoots for Xdress in California. We were living in California then. And I found a great photographer who lived in L.A., and I remember going to these shoots, and we, we would never have that many looks because the photographers at that time were really expensive, and this mm -hmm. was pre-digital photography so they charged per roll of film so i would have at the most maybe a dozen looks and i would arrive at the photo shoot with my plastic safeway bag filled with the underwear <laughs> because it wasn't taking up much room a plastic yep. bag was good so the photographer would then figure out which beach we would shoot at and in la uh, you always had to have permits yes to shoot 
basically in public. But you know, I wasn't about to pay whatever it would, would cost. And we and our photographer is really good at guerrilla, guerrilla photography. So we would just you know like sneak down to these beaches and get the model to get into the stuff and shoot it quickly before the helicopters came by. <laughs> but there was a uh, one time I think it was like one of our first times there and I had my plastic bag filled with men's lingerie and uh, we chose a beach that was kind of off the beaten path but it was also happening on the same day that a Victoria's lingerie shoot was happening not at the same beach at like one beach over and it was it was just surreal me walking through or right past the Victoria's Secret lingerie all their trailers all their hundreds of people that were involved in one of these shoots and there i am one person with a model <laughs> and a plastic bag filled with men's lingerie oh, <laughs> it was just funny. very strange so that was fun um what was the other thing yeah that, that was the main main one that just came to mind yeah. funny Victoria's yeah. your secret was right yeah. hey oh yeah. my goodness that is yeah it's just amazing that because there's so much work that goes into a shoot that it's people just like i said they just think it's just fun work and it's like oh we hang out we do this and it's like no you got to make sure everything's done and your whole purpose is to enhance the pictures are to help you sell the underwear so people just don't think of that and you guys have always done such an amazing job at that with your models and photo shoots that it's like okay because a good picture can sell a ton of underwear. Because I've seen it in the past where I see a picture and I'm like, oh, that's going to sell out. Look at that. It's awesome. Yes. Well, thank you very much. Yes, we, we do enjoy our photo shoots. I, I remember when in the first days of shooting in London, I was told by one of my photographers that whenever there was kind of a dicey product to sell, which apparently was ours, it was always good to have weed alcohol and some porno magazines on site for the model and i tell you that stuck with me and i always made sure that i had those things on hand going forward and i think it helped it relaxed everybody that's funny we've had similar issues when we've done ours and we've had only a few things like you uh sell but mainly it's just normal like thongs jocks bikinis you know the regular men's underwear and the models had to take some liquid courage before they got out there. <laughs> and I'm like, Sir, and these are, of course, the boys who have zero body fat. And they're like, oh, my God, I'm so fat. And you're like, what are you talking about? So, yeah, it's that helps the boys relax a little. And <laughs> But, yeah, I've heard that as well. And then because once you this bottle just appeared, and I'm like, where did that come from? And uh person I was working with is like, it's needed today. Just trust me. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's like, don't get anyone too happy. Still got to shoot. Oh, yes. That, that is a funny story. Yes. Um, the, you know, the, the models were that I, I find that even I, I still do all these model shoots, all the photo shoots and everything. Mm -hmm. I have people to do most of the stuff, but I feel when I'm there, it helps on all the little minute details. And also I'm a bit of a micromanager, but it never hurts to tell the models how gorgeous they are. Yes. I, I agree. tell it to them many, many times. And I, I feel that, that that certainly helps because they are gorgeous. But even if they weren't just having the courage to stand in front of a camera wearing our stuff. I mean, I would not do that. Well, too, it helps them because I'm sure some of the models in the past have never worn anything like that. And to hear it's like, that looks really good on you. Or it really shows off, insert, whatever, that they're like, oh, okay. And we've done that with our shoots, too, where it's like they've never worn a thong or a bikini. And it's like, oh, that looks really good on you. And they're like, oh, really? Okay. So that helps the models loosen up. And But, yeah, I'm glad it's not just us when I had these issues. So I'm very happy to hear that. Yeah. I think that's the thing. The more people start doing this sort of product more companies that do it there are just so many shared stories mm -hmm. and it's like we're, we're not out there alone we're not the only ones doing it we're not the only ones dealing with a lot of these issues and of course the all the issues of why is it that you know women can model underwear but men can't exactly it, it's, it's you know i know on the i was going to you know at some point give out the social media information and yeah. 
when I give it out, it's funny because like each social media outlet has kind of a different name because we've been shut down so many times. <laughs> That's, that leads me to my next question I was going to ask you is social media, we know it from experience that you can show women in lingerie, you can do anything, but when you get a man up there, especially with what you sell, it's, oh, no, that's that's a strike against you. You can't wear that. That's community standard. Nope, nope. Because I got one this week from when I worked with an underwear seller in 2013. They oh sent a thing God. over. And I haven't yeah. been an administrator since 2013 when I left. And they're like, this violates our standard. I'm like, I can't do anything with this. So how do you do your social media so is to least get kicked off since you said you've been kicked off several times mm -hmm. well the, you never know what mm -hmm. facebook when they change their rules or whatever yes uh, so yeah we're still being pulled up on images that were you know when we first started our facebook page and we have changed our facebook page four times we've lost tens of thousands of customers every time oh, but yeah anyway you know about that so what we do now is we're very careful never to show the front of anything even mm -hmm. if it's not seen through um just don't show this front and i mean on the few occasions where we do then our guy kind of puts a circle and and fades out the the genital area Yep. So that seems to work, but sometimes it doesn't, you know, and we show the backs as far as I know, you know, you can still show thongs on certain social media yeah. outlets. Um, on other ones, you can't. Uh, uh, if, going back to our website, we sell on Shopify and we also sell on the shop app, which is part of Shopify. Yes. And they just they just knocked us off on extras because they said you can't show men wearing bras. And it's like, what? <laughs> What? So Whoa. This, it's just, it, I don't know if it's, you know, AI that's doing it and AI has an issue with men wearing bras or if there's an actual person looking at the stuff and saying, I'm offended. So let's kick them off. But it, it just goes on and on. And, you know, here we are in 2022 and you would think all this would be behind us, but it's not. Uh, just to me, it just, I, I don't understand why the community in general isn't just calling bullshit a bit more to exactly. all of these social media companies and all these other places that are saying, you know, this is weird. You know, you're weird. I'm not going to accept it. So I still can't get over Shopify saying, no, you cannot show mint. That blows my mind. Well, I, I should uh, just, just to reiterate, it's not Shopify itself. It's shop, which is oh, the, the shop Shopify. app. Okay. Yeah. But that... you know, it's part of Shopify. That makes more sense. Okay, got you, yeah. got you. Okay, if yeah. you run a store out there, anyone listening, because we have a couple of store owners that listen to our podcast, take note, because that's just still wild that you can't do it even on the shop app. Because mm, yeah. I don't even, because a friend told me about the shop that goes to um, Facebook, Oh, you can go through and change images, but I'm like, that'll take so much time to go through and change images to do all this stuff. I'm just like, no, I'm just not even going to worry about it. I'm, mm -hmm. It's it's more trouble than it's worth because I think the double standard in men's underwear, especially in social and whatnot, is crazy because I went to Magic a couple of years ago and sat in on some of the seminars they have, like how to sell, how to do things. And, of course, being magic and whatnot, it's geared to women's brands. And they were talking about all these social media things you can do and go live and pictures and da-da-da. And I'm like, yeah, you can do that yeah. if you're women's, but you can't do it if you're men's underwear. So, yes. yeah. Yes, that's right. And I bet you spend so much energy when, when you're when – you're, uh, marketed to by all these companies who say, you know, I can I can get your brand out there and I can do this and that. And you say, we do men's underwear. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. I know all about it. It's, I'll, I'll be able to get it out there. And it's like, no, no, no you can't. And this is even showing. So I, I think the only way that you can market it to these places or, or get it on Google is doing flat lays. I mean, even then, I think you have to be careful. Yeah, it's that's a whole I, entire I show. Yeah, it's just like, why is it? Why is it that women's bodies are 
are just cherished and you know everything about it is so good but you can't show the line of a man's penis you know that. showing through the under it's that. i just don't understand men I think should keep it there. everyone kicked off social yeah. media whether you're a person a brand and it's like, and like you said, they change the rules and you don't know they change the rules. And all of a sudden you get all these, oh, this violates us now. It didn't then, but it does now. Yeah. So yeah. it's just hard to, now it's getting harder and harder to market men's underwear when it should be the opposite, getting easier and easier. Since more men, gay, straight, by love underwear and love thongs and are exploring we should be having them say, yo, this is not right. We want to see this. And I've found probably, ironically, some of the strongest allies that we've had in the past have been the straight men. Because they're like, when can't we see this? And they've been vocal about everything that they want to see, different styles, different things. And it's not fair. It got kicked off. So I hope going forward we'll see many changes. But... I'm just not encouraged this last year or so. It just seems to be getting worse and worse. So, but enough of the enough of the negatives. Let's get back to some positives. Okay. Because your brand makes so many people happy in the world. Eric, who works with us on the podcast, he's bought, but he bought something just recently. It's a set, and he bought one in one color, and then he bought every color because. The way it fits, the way it felt, goes back to what you're saying about the fabrics and what, and the construction that he loves the way it looks, loves the way it makes him feel. What do you think, when guys look for underwear, what are things you think your brand helps bring forward with men outside of the fabric? What do you think it's touching the side of them they didn't have or what makes you think your brand brings so much joy to your customers? I think because we really see their genitals. Okay. And I'm not, talk not talking about the see-throughness, but we know what it feels like to have a penis. And that men in general are quite proud of that appendage, and they should mm -hmm. be. And our stuff, our, our fabrics and everything, and the designs and the way we do the pouches, is basically saying to their penis, I see you, penis, and I love you, and I'm going to make you feel so good. I think that's what that's what it comes down to. Men's and nice. men and their penises. That's a perfect. I can't ask for anything other than that. But yeah, well, I guess that wraps up all my questions I had today. I definitely want to get you back on. There's so much more we can talk about because it's just you have such interesting brands and such fun that I think. Our readers, our readers, our listeners, because we're on the podcast, love to hear more about it. So I hope we can get you back on sometime soon to talk about your other brands and other topics in underwear that especially affects you guys, like the rest of us. But in the meantime, tell them where they can find your store and then also find you on social media. Okay, so you can find us at xdress.com in the USA and xdress.co.uk in Europe, or you can reach out to us on social media. Facebook is xdress for men. Instagram is shop xdress. Twitter is xdress lingerie and YouTube. We've got some great videos showing our lingerie yes. and that is xdress lingerie at YouTube. Go follow them everything. If you didn't catch it, we'll have it in the show notes. So all you have to do is click it. Thank you so much for coming on, Christina. I really enjoyed this. I hope, I'm sure our listeners did too. Thank you so much for having me, Tim. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Bye, everyone. We'll have a new show soon. Thanks for listening to our show. If you like what you hear, consider supporting us at Patreon at patreon.com slash UNB blog. Follow us on social media. You can follow the blog at UNB blog on Twitter and Instagram. Read the blog at unbblog.com. Also follow me if you like art or anything else fun and underwear at UNB Tim on Instagram and also Twitter. Thanks for listening, and we'll have more podcasts at you very soon. Bye.